Our last speaker for the session is Luciana Silvia, Silva Salgado, who's going to give a talk on weak hyperbolicity for singular flow. So uh, uh, please. Thank you. Ready. Thank you, uh, the organizers, for invitation to speak here today. I'm enjoying very much. And I'm going to talk about uh, uh, some kind of a hyperbolicity for singular flows, uh, especially. Uh, I maybe talk uh, something about uh, what uh, Stefano talked today and uh, on Lawrence Attractor. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, my setting is this. Uh, I have a, any closed, any dimensional closed manifold, and is greater or equal to three. Uh, this is the space of C1 vector fields on M. This is the flow no, generated by this uh, vector field. Lambda here uh, is, uh, except I said the, a contrary, a compact invariant set for the for the flow or for the vector field. And uh, all singularities are hyperbolic, if any, OK? Uh, OK, we know uh, it's well known uh, the definition of hyperbolicity, uniform hyperbolicity for flows. Uh, you, we have uh, three uh, splitting, three, three sub-bundle splitting. And uh, this one is uniformly contracting. This one is the vector field direction. And this one is uniformly expanding by the action of the, co the derivative of the, the, the I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> derivative of the flow. <laughs> this is uh, um, very studied, uh, and we know several uh, features about this. You know? Then, uh, in this case, we, we don't have uh, uh, singularities accumulated by regular orbits. It's not possible. If any, this, the, it is uh, isolated, OK? Then we have a, a weaker kind of hyperbolicity that uh, emerged up in the study of the uh, Palis's Mayer conjecture, Liao, Manier, um, many, many researchers worked about it. And the dominated splitting for a flow is uh, for me, because we have another kind of dominated splitting, my finest, OK? But for me, uh, dominated splitting is a two sub bundle splitting of the tangent bundle, where uh, is known, known of them uh, trivial, and uh, we have this kind of uh, decay of correlations here. Okay. This is called the domination property. Okay. All right. Another kind of hyperbolicity weaker than uniform hyperbolicity is a partial hyperbolic one. Uh, for uh, now, in my context, in my context, uh, partial hyperbolicity is a dominated splitting such that one of the sub-bundles is or uh, either uniformly contracted or uniformly expanded. Okay. OK, I'm going to talk about hyperbolicity for flows which admit singularities accumulated by regular orbits, all right? Then uh, we know that the maybe the one of the first examples of uh, uh, robust uh, hyperbolic, robust structuring, and uh, which is now uh, uniform hyperbolic 
is the Lawrence uh, tractor. This is an example that we have a robust structure, but it is not uniformly hyperbolic because we have one singularity accumulated by regular orbits, okay? Then for me, I'm going to tell you a specific definition of singular hyperbolicity because I use for this exterior powers which is uh, equivalent to the, the other one. I have a vector space and I take the exterior power of this, this space, uh, the exterior power of RDP, and define it. Uh, you take a basis of this, this vector space and you, you take the P exterior powers, uh, exterior uh, derivative, uh, product over the, the, the vectors, okay? And uh, we can see this, uh, this one, we can see it as a p-plane inside the vector space, all right? And we know that any linear transformation between vector, uh, vector spaces induces a transformation called the p exterior power of this one. And, uh, okay, hence we can define a p-sectional expansion uh, by this inequality here, all right? We, we have uh, uh, some kind of uh, definition classical definitions of singular hyperbolicity that is the determinant of the derivative of the flow uh, restricted to uh, F sub bundle, okay? Then grow exponentially fast, all right? This is the classical singular hyperbolicity. And uh, uh, in the case, uh, I'm here to show you uh, a definition that assumes uh, expansion between um, intermediate dimension, dimensions into the central subbundle. Okay? Central subbundle is this one. We have this dominated splitting. This one is uniformly contracted, and this is the central subbundle, okay? In the central subbundle is where we look for the sectional hyperbolicity, singular hyperbolicity, all right? And then, uh, okay, we said that lambda is a p-sectional hyperbolic or singular hyperbolic of order p for a smooth flow x if there exists a partial hyperbolic splitting in two subbundles, E plus F, where E is uniformly contracting and the central subbundle is P sectionally expanding, where P here is uh, between two and the full dimension of F, right? When, when we, uh, P is equal to two, is defined by sectional hyperbolicity between uh, some authors, okay? And when the dimension is the full dimension of F, singular hyperbolicity, okay? Well, this is an example of a singular hyperbolic flow which in three dimension, uh, three dimension is equal, equivalent to, to uh, sectional hyperbolicity. <laughs> because I would like to, to be special. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I can, <laughs> now I can <laughs> to, to give you, okay. It was Vitor. <laughs> who draw up? Yeah. Okay, this is the, the well known geometric Lorentz attractor. This is 
uh, two sectional hyperbolic or single hyperbolic in dimension three, okay? Because in dimension three, volume is equal to area expansion, okay? All right, but in, the, in higher dimensions, it's not true anymore. Uh, we can give uh, an example for, from Turaev Shunikov that we have uh, an attractor in any dimensional vector field any greater or equal to four, then uh, we have three sectional expansion, which is not two sectionally expanding, okay? And so this is different, right? Okay. My first characterization here is for domination property. And I, I got uh, this theorem in, we have a continuous DXT invariant splitting in two, in two sub bundles. This is dominated if and only if we have a neta uh, less than zero for which we have this kind of gap into the Lyapunov spectrum, okay? And let me think one over T log blah, 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 blah minus blah, 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 <laughs> less than eta in a total probability set. Uh, total probability set is uh, whatever you have uh, uh, for any invariant measure, prob probability measure, you have that this, the, the set which have this property is full measure, okay? Yes. So this implies domination. Yes, you you got uh, the log of the xt over the this one, and the, you you use the uh, uh, subadditive uh, property, and you get this because you have uh, this uh, is less than zero. Then we have domination. You, you're assuming from the beginning the splitting is continuous. Yes. Or you need to prove that as well. No, I, I assume continuity. continuity. Yes. Yes. I don't know how to do without continuity. I don't know. I don't think it's possible. I don't. Um, maybe I don't know. Oh, maybe we uh, uh, ask for uh, what I have to to tell you the angle between if E and F uh, larger than, than zero. Maybe we can, oh, uh, uh, requiring the dimension is constant, maybe. And constant dimension and this. So this system does not have any similarity? No, it, it has. It has yeah, yeah. I can show you later, okay? All right, and uh, the second characterization that I, I wanted to show you is the characterization of partial hyperbolicity using the, the, the first one, okay? And we have this, the partial hyperbolicity for this set. If you know if there exists a continuous invariant splitting such that the Lyapunov exponents on E is are, are negative or positive on F, and we have the, the, the gap of the domination, okay? This is in a probability, the total probability set, all right. All right, uh, this is the definition of sectional Lyapunov exponents or Lyapunov exponents of order P along a, a, a sub-bundle are the limits one over t log the uh, p exterior power of the derivative of the flow uh, whenever they exist, all right, okay. And then the, the other characterization of p-sectional hyperbolicity that I want to give it to you is that this, this set is p-sectional hyperbolic if and only if on a set of probab total, probability, total probability, we have the, the gap of domination. The Lyapunov exponents in the E direction is negat are negative, and uh, the P sectional Lyapunov exponents in the F direction are positive. 
Okay, I, I tried to prove this without this, but uh, as I said to you, we, we, we are talking in the he said to me, oh, this is not true. I, and uh, I talk, uh, I think about, and uh, oh, this is the, the necessary condition that I had no. Okay, but I want to talk, I want to talk about the hyperbolicity via Lyapunov functions. This is what I'm here, because this, this, this gap here, I have proved by using the, this theory, okay? And then, wh what is my uh, inspiration? Uh, it is well, a well-known uh, result that uh, we have, uh, if we have a diffeomorphism morphism and a quadratic form, this is the push forward of the quadratic form by F, okay? And Levovich proved that uh, F is anosov or, or hyperbolic on the whole uh, manifold, if and only if there exists a non-continuous, uh, I'm sorry, non-degenerated quadratic form B, such that this form is positive definite, okay? Then I'm try to start this for singular flows to prove sectional hyperbolicity. And I, uh, we have a, a, a indefinite uh, non-degenerate quadratic form, a field of quadratic forms here. We define the positive and negative cones. This is the common boundary, yeah, you know. And uh, we say that a flow or, or a cycle over X is strictly separated if we, they put um, the positive cone with the common boundary inside, strictly inside the positive cone in the, in the, um, in the other point, okay? And the strictly J monotone, if J is a monotone function, all right? And then this is the, the geometric feature, okay? So, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, we got this operator here. This is the derivative of the vector field, not the flow, okay? This is the vector field, all right? And this is the adjoint of the X, all right? So, we got uh, the, uh, the characterization of a partial hyperbolic case for flows. Uh, we have partial hyperbolicity if and only if we have this uh, quadratic form positive definite, which is the uh, extension for partial hyperbolicity of the first two case in diffeomorphisms, hyperbolic diffeomorphism, okay? All right, and uh, if we take uh, this, this function delta here and take the area under this function, okay, we can detect different dominated splittings of uh, hyperbolicity over uh, vector bond or vector fields such that we have another similar definition for the, the second square, the, the square power, okay? And uh, if we take this case, we have this theorem that says in three-dimensional vector field, which is non-negative, uh, strictly separated over a non-trivial subset, where J has index one. Index one is the dimension of the negative uh, index of the, the for quadratic form, all right? Then, uh, the second square, the, the second power, exterior power, is strictly minus J separated, and lambda is singular hyperbolic if either one of the following properties is true, uh, or this, this integral goes to minus infinity, then T is plus minus infinity, uh, plus, plus infinity, and or uh, we have that this quadratic form here when tier is the trace 
of the derivative of the vector field is the uh, positive definite. Okay. Why? Why? I mean, less. This is the last result that I can show you. One minute, please. Uh, as uh, uh, Stefano said, the Lorentz equations here in the thousand uh, two thousand zero two oh two. Uh, uh, Tucker has proved that for the classical parameters values, uh, the Lorentz equation supports a robust strange attractor. And furthermore, admits a unique SR SRB measure with the support on the attractor. Okay? Okay, but indeed, <laughs> he proves that the attracting set is a singular hyperbolic one attractor. Okay? Then, what do we uh, Tucker and myself uh, are trying to, to prove is by using this result here, we are trying to um, maybe use less computer assistance. Um, we know, uh, we, we see, we saw that uh, uh, over the singularities, okay, and uh, I, uh, I, I, we are now studying how to use this over the flow, all right? And there's a, um, a work in progress with Tucker and uh, Vito. We, we are trying to, to prove this. We have some, some progress. Yes, uh, we believe that it is it's true, but... I think that it's not possible now, from for now maybe, uh, to to get off all uh, computer assistance. But uh, we we think that it's it is going to simplify the proof of Tucker. Okay, this is it. Thank you very much. Thank you.